Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I don't have too much more to say on top of what I mentioned in the last video, so I'll just reiterate that and we can hop right into Persona 4 Golden. So like I said in the update portion of the last video, I won't be talking about Shin Megami Tensei 5 because nothing grabbed my eye. Well, I mean, the new character looks like Genderbent Cosmos from Xenosaga, but that's about it. Neither good nor bad, just an observation. And uploads might get spotty or drop in quality as my son's due date creeps closer, and we prepare for that. Exciting times up here, I tell you what. Now, what can I say about Persona 4 Golden that hasn't been said by those for and against the game? The game is great. The game is not great. The game is better than mainline. The game is worse than mainline. This, that, the third. Well, to be honest, not much, but I don't really care. They're them, and I'm me. So let's begin this midpoint video. I know I'm skipping the first impressions part of things, but I'm too far along in this game to even do one. The game takes place during the school year in the town of Inaba, where a string of very, well, very puzzling murders are cropping up. You, as the main character and a wildcard user, are thrown in the middle to solve this case with the help of other friends from school. Through the power of your bonds, you're able to save three of your friends, so far, but not without drawing the suspicion of the police, specifically your uncle, a detective of Inaba Police Department, and his bitch, I mean assistant. That's it. That's the story as it goes. The rest of it is social simulation. Trying to make friends, trying to net you the girl of your dreams, contending with school, all of that high school shit. What makes the social sim stuff worth it is the bonuses it gives to Persona Fusion. Just having three levels into a social link will boost your Persona's level when fusing at least twice, and allow said Persona to learn skills otherwise unknown unless you pull rank in that social link. Backpedaling just a bit, I should probably mention that you aren't just leveling your party members, but their persona as well. So technically, you're leveling 8 party members instead of the 4 you take with you into a dungeon. As for battling, it's a lot like playing Persona 3. You and the enemy take turns hitting each other, trying to target weaknesses. When a weakness is found, you'll get one more, allowing that character to perform an extra action. The press turn system in regular Megami Tensei. This character can perform extra actions as long as there are enemies with that weakness to knock down. Once all enemies have been knocked prone, you can execute an all-out attack to deal massive damage. If you end the battle with an all-out attack or a critical hit, you'll trigger shuffle time, which gives you bonus rewards like persona cards, skills, full recovery, or other useful items on top of the experience and money earned. Okay, very brief rundown of how the story and mechanics go. I'll get into what I like and dislike about what i played so far. I can promise you the likes outweigh the dislikes so far. First off, I'll tell you what motivates me the most to complete this game. Yeah, the story holds my attention, the level design keeps me interested, but that only goes so far. The biggest motivator for me is meeting the level requirements for fusing personas. I'm addicted. I adore this mechanic in the Megami Tensei series. I straight lose time buying demons from the compendium just to see what I can fuse. Yes, the search mechanic is there, but something about picking two random personas and seeing what pops up straight scratches an itch I didn't know I had. And seeing what creatures come from what mythos pops up into the new persona section is always so fucking cool to me. I will lose hours into just grinding, fusing, grinding, and fusing some more that I ended up overleveling and breezing through the first, like, two dungeons that I played through. Yes, I know that isn't hard playing on normal mode, but still, that's just a lot of time just grinding and fusing. Matter of fact, I think in the gameplay footage you'll see a battle with one of my favorites, Samael. So in terms of favorite characters, best girl is Yosuke. He's such a moron and I have to laugh at him. A lot of his humor ends up being slapstick comedy or something of the like, and his failures at picking up women are pretty good to watch too. The amount of shit he goes through just to lighten the atmosphere for the other characters, who are also trying to find this serial killer shows just how much holding on to his friends means him. As a side note, I count twice he's damaged his favorite appendage just riding to school each morning. Regrettably, my second place goes to Teddy at the moment. He's so corny, but I like bad puns, so it works out for me. 
I won't incriminate myself more here. I know the majority of the people who play this game find him irritating as shit. And no, that doesn't mean I like Morgana either. I can't fucking stand Morgana. But that's, that's, that's a different video. That is a different video entirely. Let me know in the comments section below if you want to see that video anytime soon. Because I'm absolutely positive we could all use one more person jumping on the Morgana hate train. So everyone has a memorable point in the game. Could be a particular dungeon, or that particular cutscene that just ripped at your heartstrings. I have two at this particular moment in time. First is when Kanji confronts his shadow and comes to terms with his effeminate side. Takes a lot of guts to do that. He was raised in a textile store, so he grew up with interests in sewing and fabrics. So it got him made fun of as a kid. It's turned into an interest in men in the long run, which was a large part and a focal point in his development as a character. The rest is spiced up with by his interactions with the other characters after coming to terms with all that and developing his persona. The dungeon I found most memorable? Well, it's the point I'm at now. Risei's dungeon. It's a strip club. I'm a little ashamed. Matter of fact, it's called Maruku Striptease. I feel like this dungeon is a joke dungeon because of the shadows in particular. There are shadows that are shaped like detectives with handguns. There, there are shadows that are shaped like strands of DNA. You know, the joke that a strip club is just covered in... Yeah, moving on. I almost don't want to progress in this game just because I love this dungeon so much. Gets me a chuckle every single time I see it. Okay, on to dislikes. This was the hardest thing for me to think about and really sit down and try to list out because I can't say there are too many things that I dislike about the game. It's a little heavy on the stereotypes and anime tropes, but I can just mo roll my eyes and move on at that point. I went into this game expecting really tropey characters and I wasn't disappointed, we'll put it that way. I mean, some of the exchanges between Kanji and Yosuke are a little on the brutal side, but once again, I just really roll my eyes and move on. Besides, I like Kanji, so I defend him a little bit. He's pretty kind underneath the front he puts up, and I can appreciate both sides of that personality. There are other jokes in there that try a little too hard, but you have to experience them. I'm not going to sit there and lay them out for you. Besides, I'm more of a, su a subtle humor guy myself, so that's up for you. Uh, that's up to you guys to decide. I'll close with this. For a break from mainline SMT, this game was a pleasant change in pace. So far it doesn't take itself too too seriously, but still carries a well enough written plot to keep me, as a player invested enough in the story, to sink stupid amounts of time into it. I understand why some of the people in the mainline audience would be annoyed by Persona 4, but personally I'm enjoying it. If you're looking to get your way into SMT, this is probably a good stepping stone to do so. The battle mechanics are close enough to get your feet wet, while the story is more relatable in a sense that any sort of person who never looked at Megami Tensei before could jump in, do some research, and take a deep dive just off of Persona 4 alone. Now the question is, will you take the dive? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and a comment telling me your favorite bits of Persona 4. And follow me on social media, links in the description below. If you didn't, hit that thumbs down and leave a comment telling me what I can do to improve my content and I'll work on it. Any little bit helps. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I will see you later.